after going through this interaction the outcomes you will learn will be as follows you will know that how to write shape function expressions for 1d elements if the element has two nodes which is a linear element or you can write shape functions for three nodal element which is a quadratic element you will also know how to make shape functions when there are more than three nodes or the elements are of higher order Now you can see a straight line element with dots. These dots are the nodes. So obviously these nodes are at coordinates x1 and x2 where this line is represented along one coordinate system, one axis which is x-axis. And this is a single element as it is following a straight line in one dimension we can call it is a 1d element then it has two nodes so we can see we can count them that these are two nodes and we need to number them so we call this node as node number one and we call this node as node number two so we have two nodes and when we are applying some forces and we are trying to find the displacements in these two nodes these will be represented with a polynomial which will be a linear so that's why this 1d element with two nodes is also called a linear element so whenever there are two nodes it will always be linear how linear because if we represent the displacement of each node with u1 and u2 then the displacement will follow a straight line and this straight line is represented with an equation of a line which has a naught as slope and uh, a1 as slope and a naught where this axis touches the vertical axis so a naught here is u1 because it is this line is touching the vertical axis at u1 which is abscissa and the slope can be considered as the tan theta for this straight line which can be shown collectively as this where this portion u2 minus u1 is the vertical portion and x2 minus x1 is the horizontal portion which is giving the tan theta or slope for this line and u1 is the uh, a1 and a0 is the slope of this uh, line so these two this equation collectively becomes makes the straight line so that's why this element is known as linear and the equation is of the line as well where the degree of the element is one so here if you see we have to find the shape function of these two nodes and we know that there are two nodes so there will be two shape functions so always the number of shape functions will be equal to the number of nodes so two nodes and two shape functions so let's see how we can calculate the shape function for node number one we will call shape function as capital n and the subscript will tell the number of the node so n1 will be the shape function now the shape function will always be in the form of a fraction and in the fraction we have the denominator here on the upper portion and numerator here in the dom in the lower portion for the uh, numerator we are calculating the shape function for node number one now and you have to consider yourself standing at this node forget this coordinate for the moment you are standing at x1 but you are not considering 
it at the moment and you will look for what are the other coordinates available what are the other nodes available so you can see here there is node number two available and its coordinate is x2 and what is the independent variable independent variable is x so you will write what is independent variable that is x and then you will subtract the other coordinate available here which is x2 so we will write this so this will complete the numerator portion for this k-shape function for the denominator portion you will evaluate this term at the coordinate we were you were measuring the shape function which is n which is 1 at the moment and the coordinate here is x1 so you will say x is equal to x1 now so you will put x1 in place of x and then you will write x1 minus x2 so this is the shape function similarly if i try to make the shape function for second node it will be called n2 and it again it has a fraction this time we will stand at shape function 2 and we will see what is the other coordinates available if you see the other coordinates it is 1 and we are forgetting x2 at the moment so we will see what is independent variable we will independent variable is x we will write x minus we will subtract the other node coordinates available here here only we have x1 so we will subtract x1 here and in the denominator we will evaluate the same numerator at the place where we are standing now which is node number two and its coordinate is x2 so we will put x equal to x2 and the remaining will remain the same so this completes the shape function 2 so you can write the independent variable first or you can write the coordinate of the other node first you can do it in the both ways and when you will do the same expression in the denominator the result will remain unchanged so it is not important that you write x1 first or x first it remains the same for example if i try to reevaluate this shape function one by writing the coordinate first i will write it as the coordinate where we are standing here is n1 and the other is x2 so we will write the other coordinate which is available and we will subtract the independent variable here which is x so x2 minus x is the numerator and in the denominator we will evaluate the same which will at where we are standing now so x2 minus x that we are standing here at the moment at x1 so we will write x1 here so you see both ways it will give you the same result because if i subtract minus minus from both sides it will have the same results so there is no nothing important if you write x1 first uh, x first or x2 first same goes for the shape function too so this is how you write shape function for a linear element which always has two nodes now we have a similar element here but this time it has three dots or three nodes here and again it is along one dimension with three coordinates x1 x2 and x3 so we can again call it a linear element and uh, it, a 1d element it is not a linear element but a 1d element because it is changing in only one dimension then it has three nodes and when we are trying to evaluate these three nodes the polynomial which will be used will be having three terms with higher degree uh, of two so this is a square or quadratic a polynomial so the function this type of element will always be known as quadratic element then uh, in this quadratic element if we see what are the number of nodes three nodes so what will be the number of shape functions the shape function will always be equal to the number of nodes so they will also be three so three nodes three shape functions so if we try to evaluate these three shape functions now let's do that for the shape function one we will write first of all we have to do the numbering so for the numbering we will always number the and sides first and then the middle one will be numbered so this is the order of numbering so let's see how we'll 
the shape function look like the shape function for node 1 which is here at the moment we will forget this coordinate we will write a fraction and now we are trying to see the numerator for the numerator we will see what is the independent variable which is x and we will subtract the other coordinate available here we have the x3 which has coordinate x2 so we will subtract x2 from here so this is one expression but see there is another node available here which is at coordinate x3 which is node 2 so we will again write its expression as well so we will subtract the independent variable x uh, x minus the coordinate which we are thinking which is not the coordinate where we are standing now we are standing at x1 so we have subtract all coordinates except the one where we are standing which is x1 so x2 is subtracted subtracted x3 is subtracted now let's come towards the denominator for denominator you have to do nothing but to reevaluate this numerator by putting x2 where you are standing now we are standing at x1 so we will put x equal to x1 here and reevaluate the numerator so numerator will be x1 minus x2 and x1 minus x3 so this is how you calculate the shape function for an element which has three nodes so it's a linear element you can see uh, sorry, it's a 1D element. You can see it is moving along one dimension. It has three nodes. Its equation is quadratic, so it will need at least three conditions to solve it, and those conditions are provided by the three shape functions. We have made one shape function. We will also make the second one. The second one will be like at shape function 2. It again has a numerator and denominator. The numerator will be x minus now we are standing not at 1 but we are standing at shape function 2 so it is here and we will forget this x3 for the moment so we will write x minus x1 and x minus x2 which are the other two coordinates for the other two nodes and we will evaluate this at the same coordinate we are standing at x3 so x3 minus x2 and x3 minus x1 this is the shape function for node number two. Now what's remaining? The node number three. For node number three, now we come towards node number three. For the node number three, the shape function will look like uh, a numerator. Then it will have the x minus, we will forget x2, x minus x1, which is the one coordinate for node number one, and x minus x3, which is the coordinate for node number 2. And we will reevaluate this at denominator where we are standing. We are standing at x2, so x will become x2 now. So x2 minus x1, x2 minus x3. So this is the three shape functions for a quadratic element. Now, moving towards higher orders or higher degrees so now we see again a straight line uh, changing in one dimension so if you see it in a coordinate system it is moving in one dimension which is x-axis so again it is a 1d element this time it has four coordinates so it is a 1d element with four coordinates meaning it has four nodes and how we can number them we have to number First of all, we will number the end nodes 1 and 2, and then we will number the middle nodes 3 and 4. So these are the four node numbers. And for the four nodes, when we will make a polynomial, it will have four terms in it, and the highest uh, degree is 3. So this is a cubic polynomial. So when we make four nodes, automatically the expression for displacement becomes cubic. So we need four conditions to solve it and these four conditions are given by four shape functions. So it will have uh, three shape functions. No, it has four shape functions. So I made a mistake here. It has four shape functions. So always number of nodes and number of shape functions are equal. So we will have four shape functions here. And in the sh four shape functions, let's see, let's build one. Let's build the shape function number one and one again it will have it will be a fraction so we will make a longer fraction this time in the numerator we take the independent variable which is x 
and we are standing at node number one so we'll forget x1 and one by one we will subtract all these three so let's take it from two from node number two it is x4 for node number three it is x2 for node number four it is x3 so these are three numerator terms which are being multiplied to each other and in the denominator we have to evaluate this numerator at the coordinate we are standing now we are standing at x1 so we will put x into x1 in this all expressions and rewrite in the denominator so it becomes x1 minus x4 x1 minus x2 x1 minus x3 so similarly we can evaluate one of the middle nodes here you can practice your own for the other two nodes we can rewrite the shear function number four in the shape number four we have the numerator in the numerator we have x we are standing here now so this is place where we are standing here so forget the rest forget uh, x3 so x3 is forgotten so we will write x minus x1 for node number one x minus x4 for node number two and x minus x2 for node number three and in the denominator we will evaluate x equal to x3 so we will put x equal to x3 here so this will become x3 minus x1 x3 minus x4 x3 minus x2 so this is how you make shape functions and when you will simplify each of the shape function the higher uh, power exponential power of x will be cube so this that's why the shape function is also cubic so this is a cubic element so when we take four nodes in a 1d element it is always called a cubic element now it's time to challenge yourself you if you see again this is a 1d element but this time it has five nodes so if you see it is changing in one axis one coordinate system so this is again a 1d element but this time it has five nodes with five coordinates so first of all how will you number these five nodes how will you number these five nodes based on the concepts you learned in the previous slides and then what will be the order or degree of the polynomial which will be expressed with five nodes and what will be that expression called and what will be the number of shape functions when we have five nodes so then using the criteria or method i told you uh, how will you make the shape function for all these nodes so let's see how can you do that that's all for today thank you